and thank you so much for joining us for this presentation, UBC Engineering's Ask Me Anything About Transfer Pathways. I'm joined here by a few friends of mine from UBC, first of which is Franco. Hi, Franco. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us as well. Uh, we're probably going to give it another minute for everyone to come in before we get going. Thanks, Franco. Also joining us today is a current UBC engineering student from UBC's Vancouver campus. Hi, Hamza. Hello. Hamza is going to be available for questioning, and so will Franco and I. This uh, presentation here is going to be covering some information about UBC engineering, and hopefully the majority of this time is going to be here for us to answer your questions. I'll turn it over to Franco to get us started. Thanks for joining, everyone. All right, everyone, let's get started. So thank you everyone uh, for joining us here today. As Kyle mentioned, my name is Franco Fung. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and I'm a student recruitment officer at the UBC Vancouver campus. And before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that the land that UBC has built its Vancouver campus on, uh, the land which we work, learn, connect, and innovate is on the unceded ancestral and traditional territory of the Musqueam peoples. Uh, Cal is joining us from the Okanagan campus, uh, and the, our Okanagan, Okanagan campus is situated in the territory of the Selix Okanagan Nation and their peoples. Uh, since we're also in a virtual uh, virtual space, I would also like to acknowledge that you may be joining us from all over all over the world, from many different places near and far, and like to acknowledge the traditional owners and caretakers of these lands. So, th this we we've done a quick round of introductions again, but just quickly to go over. Uh, my name is Frank. I'm here from the Vancouver campus, and I'm a student recruitment officer. Uh, you'll hear from Kyle again shortly. He's one of our engineering advisors at our Okanagan campus. Uh, we also have Chloe in the background. Chloe is right. Chloe is right now um, an events and communications coordinator on our team, and also a current UBC engineering student. Uh, she is in her third year of materials engineering. And then you quickly saw Hamza earlier. Uh, he's currently in his fourth year computer engineering uh, uh, computer engineering program, uh, and is also a transfer student as well. So let's start off by talking about why you should choose to study engineering at UBC. So if you join, choose to join us at, a, at our community, uh, you'll be joining a university which is globally recognized for its excellence in teaching and research as well as its global impact. Uh, many university rankings such as like Time Tire Education ranks UBC as number two in Canada and within the top 50 universities in the world. Uh, and in particular, number one, when we look at industry innovation and infrastructure. Now, when we look at UBC engineering specifically, um, McLean's, which releases rankings on universities each and every single year, uh, they rank UBC engineering as the number two engineering program in Canada based on our program and research reputation. And of course, we're also home to the largest co-op program here in Western Canada, where we have, again, fantastic partnerships with our employers to set you up for success. We'll touch on a little bit more on co-op a little bit later on, but overall, if you join us at UBC, you will be joining one of the top ranked universities in the world. So there are two ways to get an engineering degree from UBC. Uh, you can study at our Okanagan campus in Kelowna or the Vancouver campus, which is located on the west end of Vancouver. Now, the campuses itself are about a four and a half drive away from each other, or if you decide to fly, it's about a one hour flight. Uh, while the field of each campus is quite different, both of the campus engineering programs are equally prestigious and accredited, where you'll be learning and working with professors who are leaders in their fields. When you're comparing both of our UBC campuses, uh, it's important to know that both campuses have the same academic offerings. However, their, uh, their learning environments could look a little bit different. So when you're thinking about choosing which campus could be right for you, um, of course, definitely take a look at the surrounding area that you'll be studying, right? Take a look at things like things to consider will include things like campus size, city size, uh, look at the geographic characteristics, uh, characteristics of both of these locations. What would align with your interests as well? I think those would be great starting points to help you choose if maybe Vancouver or Okanagan campus could be the best fit for you. Now, if you aren't able to visit these places in person, um, that's okay too. We do have a lot of virtual campus options, uh, like their virtual campus tours. Uh, and you can also connect with some of our current students through our chat with the current student program, which you can find on our engineering.ubc.ca websites. Now, one of the things that could maybe help you make a decision about which campus to go to could be the different programs that we offer. 
Um, so at our UBC Okanagan campus, which is located in the city of Kelowna in a region called the Okanagan Valley, uh, this is an area which is known for its crystal clear lakes and surrounding mountains. Um, now, engineering at our Okanagan campus, uh, we got five different options for you. So you can study in civil, computer, electrical, manufacturing, or mechanical engineering. Uh, now, when we talk about the pro different programs, they could be, you could hear them be referred to as specializations or majors. Uh, and you can pick one of those. All engineering students are required to pursue one of those programs. Now, one of the things that is unique to the Okanagan campus is the way that you're able to select your program. So at the Okanagan campus, we do offer guaranteed program placement. Uh, so essentially what that means is you're guaranteed uh, what you want to study. So for example, if you want to uh, pursue civil engineering, you would pick civil engineering during the program placement process, and you will be guaranteed a seat in that program. Now, this is a little bit different um, at our Vancouver campus. So when we go over to our Vancouver campus, um, we got 14 different undergraduate programs that you can look at, uh, that you can look into. So those are uh, the same five offered at the Okanagan are also open, uh, offered at the Vancouver campus with a few more options available for you. Now, our Vancouver campus is, as I mentioned earlier, on the west side uh, of the city of Vancouver, on the western tip of the Point Grey Peninsula. And this place is known for its west coast seaport and again, more surrounding mountains. And during our uh, Vancouver campus, I mentioned has 14 engineering programs you can choose into. Um, now with the Vancouver campus, um, when choosing a program, uh, students have to go through the engineering program placement process. Um, now this is a competitive process at our Vancouver campus. Uh, so usually this program placement process begins in mid-March and usually students will hear of their program placement by the end of May. Um, so just in time for you to be able to start selecting your courses for year two. Uh, so Chloe's going to drop a chat, um, uh, drop a message in the chat very shortly about to, for you to learn a little bit more about the second year placement process. Um, essentially, it's a competitive process based on your grades and also your personal statement. So both of those options will be uh, evaluated when it comes time uh, for our programs to evaluate students and place them in their different programs. If you have more questions, again, We'll, we'll be able to maybe help demystify that process and help answer some of those uh, questions later on. So if you choose to study with us, and I think this is a really great thing about pursuing a university degree is the opportunity for you to be able to customize your degree. Um, so if you're choosing to transfer into uh, UBC engineering um, from the very start, all of our all of our courses, uh, you'll be through all of our courses. You'll be exposed to hands-on design projects where you're going to be able to work in teams. Right, you're going to be able to continue having these courses year to year that continue to build on these project-based team learning experiences, and they will culminate in your final year with a capstone design project. Uh, so where you and your peers will work with industry partners to solve some real life problems. Um, some, some capstone projects in the past have actually become startups or have allowed students to, to secure jobs upon graduation. Uh, so some capstone projects uh, recently included like mechanical engineering students uh, creating a chocolate 3D printer. Uh, civil engineering students have uh, helped BC Ferries design a machine shop. Um, and environmental engineering students have helped design a year-round treatment plant uh, to treat groundwater that was contaminated by a mine uh, up in Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories. If you, uh, in addition to the coursework that you might do, you can also uh, get engaged in research. As I mentioned, we have some of the top researchers uh, in the world here at UBC. Um, so if you want to engage in research, uh, you can get paid research experiences, um, or you can participate in clubs like the Undergraduate Research Organization, which helps pair students with areas of interest that they are interested in. Later on in your degree, you can also customize your studies by choosing a uh, to pursue a minor if you want to do that. So that's a great way for you to be able to combine two different areas of study for yourself. It's not a requirement, uh, but it will allow you to have that secondary focus if you want to do that. So examples of minors available at the Vancouver campus include like entrepreneurship, honors math and arts, for example. Um, Okanagan samples could include like management, computer science and arts as well. Um, we also offer some dual degree options as well. So with Vancouver, we have a Bachelor of Arts. And then Okanagan campus, we offer dual degree options with uh, Applied Science and the Master of Management program. 
Another way that you can also further your study within, within the programs could be through options and concentrations. Um, so there are some programs offer some of these options. So for example, in mechanical engineering, you can uh, choose to customize your learning experience by taking an option in aerospace, uh, biomechanics uh, and medical devices, energy environment, mechatronics, or you can look at naval architecture and marine engineering. Uh, for example, maybe in electrical engineering, you can also do a biomedical option as well. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can customize your degree uh, through the options or research or the different minors that we have available. If you're maybe looking elsewhere, you can also look, uh, consider going abroad to work, research or study in your third year too. Uh, another way that you can also diversify could be by joining a student design team where you can design and create a project outside of the classroom. It's a great way to make new friends and also maybe apply another way for you to apply your learning. Uh, so there are many design teams, clubs, and affiliate chapters at both of our campuses to help expand your network. Um, so at the Okanagan campus, we have about over 15 uh, different engineering design teams, clubs, or associations that you can join. Um, and at the Vancouver campus, we have over 30 different of these student design teams or clubs that you can join as well. Now let's talk about co-op. Uh, so co-op is, uh, is a very popular talk, uh, topic. A lot of students are interested, of course, in Applying, learn, le applying their learning and getting paid while they're doing that. Uh, as I mentioned off the top of the presentation, we do very well with co-op. We have the largest uh, co-op program here in Western Canada. Um, so usually with co-op, what it allows you to do is it will help you get uh, up to 16 to 20 months of full-time paid work experience. Uh, so on the screen there in 2023, you'll see that some of our top employers uh, have included uh, companies like Tech Resources, uh, Metro Vancouver, Tesla Motors, Suncor Energy, and Stem Cell Technologies. Uh, if you want to go abroad and be able to work, we have had students, 102 uh, students worked internationally last year across 16 different countries. And if you're interested in, in kind of what uh, students will make, uh, on average, across all four work terms last year, our students made just over $65,000. Now, of course, this will vary based on the different positions you take. And also, uh, as you progress and accumulate uh, work experience, this can also potentially help you earn a little bit more as well. So I mentioned our UBC has one of the largest co-op programs in Canada. And usually for students, um, how do you uh, start applying for a co-op? Usually students uh, start applying usually either in second or after third year. So that is when we'll start looking at that. And to qualify for co-op, uh, students do need to meet a minimum GPA requirement, which typically is around 65%. Um, and then we will get you through the co-op prep programs to get you prepared uh, to start applying for these positions. So that's a quick glance uh, about the UBC engineering uh, kind of what the student experience and what the program experience could look like. Now I'm going to turn it over to Kyle to talk about how you can apply and uh, apply for admission for a transfer student. Thank you so much, Franco. Wow, <clears throat> that's amazing. So inspiring. So many opportunities. Uh, students and guests, if you have questions, we will have time to be answering questions in the second half of this presentation. So please stick around. Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about programs offered in both of our campuses and all of the fun student experiences, let's talk a little bit more about admissions. Definitely a hot topic for students that are looking to apply. When we talk about the various transfer pathways to UBC, so this is separate from applying direct from high school, you can apply to UBC Engineering as a transfer student, and there's really two main pathways that, that we offer. Excuse me, the first of which would be an engineering transfer program. So we have agreements with a variety of post secondary institutions across British Columbia, and we have uh, engineering transfer programs set in place. Those partner schools, they may have different names for them. It could be an engineering certificate or a common first year engineering curriculum or the engineering transfer program. But in general, we have an agreement, there's a set amount of courses. You have to complete all of those courses within a set timeline. And if you do that and you earn the GPA uh, for your desired campus, you're guaranteed admission into second year. So if you're looking to go to the Vancouver campus in engineering and you're completing one of our engineering transfer programs and you earn that 3.1 GPA, you'll be admitted into the Bachelor of Applied Science at UBC. That's what we call our, our engineering degree. And then you'd enter your your engineering program placement process where they look at your GPA from that first year set of courses to place you into your specialization. Very similar for the Okanagan campus. Um, 
a little bit smaller campus in comparison to Vancouver, and therefore we're able to offer a little bit lower GPA for those. But that's it's quite clean. If you're within one of our partner schools, take all of the courses within the prescribed timeline and earn the minimum GPA. Sometimes life happens though. Maybe you reduce that course load or you spread those courses out over time and you're still at our partner institution, but maybe you failed one of those courses. It's okay. Admissions will still evaluate your application. I would still encourage you to apply. Every year we have questions from students in an engineering transfer program that say, oh shoot, I failed one of my courses. Can I not get in now? Still apply because now admissions will look at your evaluation or your application based on the post-secondary admission criteria. So this admission criteria would be the same for all students who are applying from a post-secondary institution that isn't with one of our partner schools. Maybe it's in a different province in Canada or a different country. What admissions will do is they'll look at your most recent 30 credits of post-secondary studies, and they're gonna be looking for an overall GPA as well as uh, a GPA of your math, chemistry, physics courses specifically that are equivalent to our, our first year courses. So um, really leave admissions to do their job on how they're gonna <clears throat> determine your application and, and break it down. More so it's, it's your job to be focusing on your courses right now at your current institution, decide where you wanna be studying next and then making sure you get that application in on time. But these are the main two admission criteria pathways that uh, a transfer student can apply to UBC Engineering. Now, if you fall below this second one here, post-secondary transfer, maybe you have less than 30 credits. Uh, maybe you've only taken a handful of courses at post-secondary. That's okay too. Admissions may decide to look at both your post-secondary transcripts and your high school transcripts, but that's something that they would determine once you've applied and, and submitted your, your transcripts. Now, when you're transferring into UBC Engineering, the main goal is to get in to UBC Engineering or what UBC calls the Bachelor of Applied Science, that is our engineering degree. And then you'll also be given a year level from admission. So you could be admitted directly into year two. If you did our transfer program, you did all of UBC Engineering's first year courses at that partner institution, you'll go directly into year two, taking all year two courses. If you didn't get all of them done, you could still get year two standing if you completed at least 27 credits and your first year at UBC might have your remaining first year courses as well as any second year courses you're eligible for. It's also really common for transfer students, maybe if they're coming from out of country or out of province, maybe they weren't taking primarily all engineering courses that are equivalent to our engineering courses. Maybe you get admitted into engineering, into the Bachelor of Applied Science, and you're given year one level standing. That's great as well. You'll get transfer credits for any courses that are equivalent to our first year engineering courses. And then you could finish up the remainder of your first year engineering courses at UBC, your first year on campus, and possibly also some second year courses if, if you're eligible. So lots of different pathways and outcomes for transfer students coming to UBC engineering. If you're a high school student right now and you're considering staying closer to home, going to a post-secondary institution before applying to transfer to UBC, I'd encourage you to connect with us before registering for those college or university courses to see if maybe they are equivalent. So maybe you can get a heads up before you register in those, in those courses. If you're planning on applying to UBC this year and you're wanting to transfer to UBC Engineering to start in September of 2025 at one of our UBC campuses, these dates are important to you. If you apply by December 1st, you are able to be considered for admission on your interim transcript. An interim transcript will mean be looking at your final grades for the courses in this term, this current semester, and then we'd be looking at which courses you're registered in next term, not necessarily waiting for those final grades, but you do need to finish those, those courses and maintain your admission criteria. January 15th is the deadline, the final deadline to apply to UBC. There's also many more important dates and deadlines for submitting transcripts and, and monitoring your application. So take a screenshot of this, this slide here or 
see if your phone can pick up that QR code to bookmark it um, for future dates that are that are coming up. But we recommend you apply by December 1st. If you're ready to go, you're organized and you're on the ball with your application, get it in there. Why not get it in early? It can only help. If you don't get an early offer round of admission, that's okay. You'll still be considered for the next round um, and, and continue to be competitive for that admission offer coming later after. So get that application in as soon as you can so you can enjoy that holiday holiday break. This website here is great, you.ubc.ca. Yes, it's where you can go to start your application journey. It's also where you can go to learn more about the application process, how UBC admissions evaluates your application. It's a great financial planning tab there with a first year cost calculator. You can estimate all your expenses that you can be foreseeing and, and lots of other great events. Uh, Franco was mentioning virtual campus tours. You can go to that tours, events and info sections tab and come join some virtual campus tours. So um, yeah, lots of good information there, but get on that application. Um, get it done early and out of the way so you're not cramming last minute. Let the application guide you. It's pretty intuitive. You can follow the prompts. You want to share your full academic history, all the schools you've attended. Be accurate in everything. UBC and really all institutions, they communicate by email right now. So make sure you enter the correct email when you're submitting that application. And then note down your UBC student number. You'll be called upon to share that number. If you use this contact us form that's on the screen here, they're gonna ask you your student number when they're answering your questions. So note that UBC student number when you are applying. On your application, you do get two choices, two degrees that you can uh, potentially apply for or two campuses that you can potentially apply for. So you're given a first program choice and a second program choice on that application. You don't have to indicate the second program choice. We recommend you do. Why not? You don't get charged extra for submitting two choices. And you can rank those choices based on degree of interest or campus of interest, but you definitely want to make your choice one your first choice. It's your most interested degree you want to study. So in this particular example, this student selected the Okanagan campus as their first program choice. They want to start in 2025, 26 September, which is the dates that students in this admission cycle will be applying for. And they're looking to study in the Bachelor of Applied Science. That's what UBC calls their engineering degree. And then their second choice or their backup choice is the Vancouver campus, a different campus, same time frame. Um, all engineering students are applying to get in for a September start date. That's the soonest date you can start if you're applying by the January 15th final deadline. And then they're looking to also pursue Bachelor of Applied Science in Engineering. You could choose two different programs on the same campus, the same program on two different campuses. There's lots of options there, but you definitely want to rank your first choice as your primary. In most cases for transfer students, you're not going to have a personal profile on your application. Um, generally speaking, the personal profile is only for students applying direct from high school. After you've submitted your application, there's still a little bit of work to be done from, from them. And primarily, you want to make sure you get your official transcripts into UBC. So there's some guidelines on that YOU ubc.ca site. There's step-by-step -step instructions on how to submit your transcripts to UBC, but you want to make sure those are getting in there on time. There's some dates that come up in the spring for students to get their transcripts in, depending on if they're a transfer student and where they're studying currently. Uh, but those are definitely important to follow. And you also want to monitor your email. If we're missing something, UBC Admissions is going to let you know. If there's a task that you need to complete, they will let you know, and it'll all be sent to you by email and also updated in your applicant service center. So definitely make sure you want to check it. Don't apply by the December 1st deadline. Tuck that laptop away and not check your email to the spring because you may find you're going to miss some important deadlines. We often get lots of questions about these topics here. We're going to copy these links into the chat, but if you're looking to plan out some financial planning, 
mapping out the schedule of when things are due, like tuition, uh, first year cost calculator, scholarships, loans, information about housing on both of the campuses. These are really helpful. You can screenshot this, this slide if you like. Um, we'll also post them in the chat as we're going through um, throughout. But uh, yeah, lots of good information for you to be to be covering. And we are going to be here to be answering your questions. But first, I would like to learn a little bit more from Hamza and your current experiences at UBC thus far. Thank you, Hamza, for joining us today. Hey, Kyle, thank you for uh, the presentation thus far. It's always interesting to hear the, the process that I went through a few years ago again. And it sort of brings back all the memories and sort of you know, anxiety I did have during that time because I know it is a stressful time. Um, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Hamza. I'm a fourth year computer engineering student. I, and I'm doing a minor in commerce as well. Uh, I transferred over to UBC from Langero's engineering transfer program. Uh, it was a one year certificate program where um, uh, once I got, I think it was, it was a 3.1 GPA back then too. But once I met that uh, grade requirement, I had a guaranteed admission into UBC. So uh, working uh, through the courses at Langer, I was able to get that 3.1 GPA. And I was also able to get a competitive, uh, competitive enough GPA that I got placement into uh, computer engineering at the Vancouver campus. I know back then uh, uh, to get into uh, computer engineering at Okanagan, I don't even think computer engineering was offered at Okanagan back then. But now it is, and it's super cool. So if you're into computer engineering, you can always choose the Okanagan campus, unlike my options. So I had to work really hard. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so yeah, um, right now I, at school, I'm uh, uh, in my fourth year. I, I did a co-op. I, I was a software engineering intern at a company called OSI Maritime Systems last year, where I worked on some full stack development. Uh, so it's essentially web development. I created a website for the company that they used internally amongst the corporation. It wasn't a public uh, website. It was an internal website. So I worked with a fellow, a couple other co-ops and it was a, a project that we worked on together uh, as, as co-op students with, uh, of course, we had a support from our senior uh, developers at the company who oversaw the project. And uh, it was a really insightful experience and it has given me the tools that I need to now be competitive as a as I graduate from UBC and seek software engineering roles. Uh, uh, having an internship experience during your undergraduate is very, very essential, especially in the tech industry. Um, having Not having one essentially puts you back a step. So I was lucky enough to uh, have this opportunity at UBC and I hope you all have the opportunity to, do, to get into a co-op program as well. Um, yeah, so other than co-op, um, I also was a part of a design team where I was the finance uh, lead at the design team. So design teams at UBC are essentially uh, clubs where students get together and work on an engineering project. Uh, our project uh, was uh, an agricultural robot. So this robot would go into fields and cut crops, uh, spray pesticide all autonomously. Um, my role at this, in this design team was as finance lead. So I would gather the, the funding for this project. I would uh, uh, manage the recruiting. I would manage the budget, budgeting and all of these uh, other uh, finance related tasks, which I have experience uh, for uh, because I'm also doing a minor in commerce. So it sort of goes hand in hand with the, the stuff I'm studying at school. So those are a couple, a couple of things I'm doing at UBC. Um, I hope that's... Uh, sort of a short enough introduction for myself. Uh, and I can hand it back to you, Kyle. That's amazing, Hamza. You've pretty much gotten involved in a lot of the customization experiences we talked about in earlier slides, which is amazing. Lots of times we have questions from transfer students today saying, am I gonna be disadvantaged coming in late? Or if I'm showing up late, am I gonna miss out on opportunities and and in general and in short the answer is no you're not first year courses taking our, our first year foundational program um, which is exactly what Hamza completed through his his transfer program is all about getting a good start in first year and typically a lot of the opportunities open up in, in second year 
and and beyond. Okay, we are going to get into the main attraction of this this session today. Hamza is going to be sticking around. Franco is around, and Chloe is also typing away in the chat as well. Here's another slide that you you can screenshot. There's some important uh, or helpful websites you can see down the left hand side of the screen. Lots of these were covered in our presentation. So YOU gives you all that admissions information. Um, engineering.ubc.ca slash future gives you access to more information as a, as a future student, including those chat ambassadors um, we were referencing earlier. You can take a look at more information on admissions criteria specific to engineering. There's all of our social media channels down there. And if you wanna email us directly, um, we are one faculty, but we have representatives on both campuses that can assist. We also have a QR code to another transfer information session that was highlighted at our virtual open house earlier this year. If you were there with us, amazing. And if you weren't, you can check out this video with which features even more student spotlights um, for transfer students. Now we're gonna start taking, checking out the chat. If you have questions for us and you're comfortable, please feel free to type them in the chat and we will start working our way through. I'm gonna get caught up. Thank you, Chloe, answering away at a lot of these questions here coming in. Yes, December 1st um, posted deadline, also January 15th posted deadline. The final minute to get that application in would be by 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on those posted dates. Good question in here. If you get declined based on your interim marks, does UBC reconsider your application once all your marks are released in spring? UBC admissions is looking at your first choice and they're looking to see if you're admissible for your first choice. And you may either be offered when they're looking at that particular round for your first choice, or they may say, you're not quite competitive enough, we'll save you in here for the next round seeing if you're still within that competitive range. But if they deem that you're not within the competitive range or not meeting minimum admission criteria, you may be denied or declined. And that's when they'll move down to your choice too. In this particular example of uh, if I get declined on interim, they wouldn't necessarily decline on interim. They may just wait and see your final grades coming in for later. Um, and, and they'll move on to your choice too if you're if you're denied, but they interim marks would likely just not give you an early offer. As long as you're registered in the correct courses in term two, they just wait to see more information for term two grades. All applications to UBC are um, are going to be wanting to see your final grades coming in to make sure you meet some stuff here. So. I've got a question here for Hamza. So this question here is, do you think a transfer student, is at a disadvantage for getting the specialization they want, they haven't been able to join any related clubs or make any UBC connections. So Franco answered the question here about choosing um, choosing the your, your program, and it's strictly going off GPA for the most part, but are transfer students disadvantaged for getting involved on campus uh, by, by joining later, so to speak? Uh, not at all. Uh... You actually, I believe, uh, sort of stand out because, because of uh, the the courses that sometimes you take at these uh, uh, institutions. Uh, in addition to your regular uh, uh, credits that you're taking, so oftentimes what I ended up, I ended up taking a couple extra courses at Langara, uh, just because I could fit them into my semester, and I had a, a couple of additional uh, uh, software engineering related courses that actually helped me stand out as a candidate for the clubs when I was applying to them. So you're not at a disadvantage. You might even be at a disadvantage if you've taken some extra credits in the past, if you've taken extra courses at different uh, institutions. Um, as especially um, uh, being a student who's uh, uh, who's been involved in a lot of different activities and clubs uh, prior to having gotten into UBC, uh, as long as you've uh, sort of uh, been proactive about uh, um, uh, involving yourself in extracurriculars in high school or even at these colleges, I believe that you should be able to be just as competitive as other students at university. That's great. Thank you, Hamza. Thanks for sharing. 
Lots of good questions coming through here. This is, wow, there's a lot coming in. Okay, we're going to just go through them um, in order of occurrence. So we'll keep going down the line here. I have a question about when is the first round of admission? Um, and thank you, Chloe, for answering that in the, in the chat. But just in general, UBC admissions uses an admission evaluation style called rolling admissions. And there's multiple rounds happening throughout the entire admission cycle. So that first round of offers could be going out in late January, early February, we've actually seen some offers go out for the Okanagan campus already. That first round, it gets started and then the rounds start. A round of admissions review for a particular program could take place every few days, every week, every month. They're just gonna keep going through. And when you come up as an applicant, if you're competitive for an offer at that time, you're gonna get an offer. If you're not competitive an offer for that particular round, but they think, oh, you might still be close for a future round, they'll keep you in that pool. And so essentially, no news is still good news. It's not until they deem that you're not eligible. Maybe your GPA wasn't high enough. Maybe you didn't do some of the minimum course requirements that you need to be eligible for engineering. And then they decide to deny that choice. That's when they'll then move, move on to the next one. But those rounds, so to speak, after first round, multiple rounds are happening and those time frames are, they're just continuing. So as soon as you, um, essentially you can say no news is still good news. For the most part, transfer applicants will find out a response from admissions in the late April through to early June timeframe. Uh, we try to get our offers out as soon as we can, but oftentimes we're waiting to see those term two grades. So the sooner you can get your final transcripts into UBC admissions, the better chance you have at hearing back a little bit sooner. Franco, I've got a question for you. Can students apply to enter UBC Engineering for the second term to start in January? Sure, I'm, uh, I'm in here. Hello. Uh, generally, uh, when you're looking to apply, you're applying for the September start. Um, so that is generally when students will start applying for that. Yeah. Thanks, Franco. Yeah, so all students applying now, you'd be planning to start at UBC in September of 2025. Got a question in here. I was offered admission for last September, but I couldn't join. So I started studying at my local college, India. I've completed my first year and now I'm seeking credit transfer. I wanted to inquire if there's any other uh, or special option for credit transfer. So you're gonna wanna apply to UBC again because you're setting at a different institution now, you're gonna to wanna to apply to UBC again, go include your transcripts in that application, and then they will assess that transfer credit. Um, to take a look at that, good question coming through. Is a transfer student the same or different as a student in the bridging program? That's a great question, Krista. And you technically busted us. There's a third pathway to UBC engineering that we did not include on the screen. It's called the bridging pathway. So. A bridge is typically for students who have done a technical diploma in an engineering field and have oftentimes they've gone out and worked in industry and decided I want to go back and get my bachelor's degree in engineering and this is where the bridging program um, has formed. Some students enter their technical diploma planning to go right into the bridge but if you've completed a technical diploma in Canada you could attend school at Camosun College to do our bridging program and bridge your way into UBC Engineering. And essentially, we'd be looking at the courses completed at the technical diploma to offer somewhat of an exemption. You'd be doing a year of study at Camosun College to top up some courses to get you prepared for engineering. And then you would enter either the Vancouver campus or the Okanagan campus to complete your degree. Now there's specific pathways though, unique to the program, civil engineering or mechanical engineering. Uh, you'll wanna reach out to us and we have information on our website and that transfers link. Uh, Chloe might be able to share it here in the chat that you can look at the direct programs that are offered and bridging pathways um, for those students. We also have a bridge pathway through Okanagan College in Kelowna. If you complete your technical diploma at Okanagan College, you can bridge to UBC Engineering as well. Um, so that's a, 
that's a specific pathway, uh, but definitely, definitely an option. If you're, if you're not at a college right now, if you're still finishing up high school or you're getting ready to sign up for college courses next year, the fastest route would probably be an engineering transfer program. That bridge is more so for students that have done the technical diploma or in progress of the technical diploma and have had a change of their direction and they want to come to UBC engineering now. Really good questions. Lots of them are coming, coming through here. Um, this is great. I'm currently finishing up high school calculus and physics. So I wasn't able to when I was in high school, but I want to transfer into UBC as a university transfer student. I'm worried that when I apply, I won't get in because of my transcripts. I won't show these classes complete until the end of the next winter semester. Okay, that's okay. So if you're if you're currently taking courses now or currently taking courses next semester in that January to April window, and you're planning to start at UBC in September of 2025, you still want to apply now. You would include your high school transcripts in that application and you'd include your current post-secondary transcripts that would show your current course registration. Admissions will decide how your application will be evaluated. If you have enough post-secondary credits, if you're above 24 post-secondary credits, they, they may only look at your post-secondary transcripts. But if you're below that threshold, they're, they're most likely going to look at both your college uh, or post-secondary transcripts and your high school transcripts from there. Another question from Emma, if I cannot get 27 transferable credits because of my program doesn't offer them, will I still have a chance to transfer? Chloe is correct. Yes, you still have a chance to transfer. You can still get into UBC Engineering. Any courses you completed that are equivalent to our courses, you'll get transfer credit for, and then you can finish up whatever is remaining once you're at UBC. Franco, feel free to jump in. I feel like I'm <laughs> hogging all the spots. No, right no, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> Okay, good question here. If post-secondary education is not specifically in engineering, but you have credits from math, chemistry, and physics, is it possible to be a transfer student? Yes, you can be a transfer student. You can transfer into engineering with zero transfer credits, but you still apply it as a transfer student. That's okay. Um, if your math, chemistry, physics courses are at the level of first-year university, chemistry, calculus, physics, and they're related to our chemistry, calculus, physics courses, um, yeah, you've got a shot at transfer credit. Sometimes we have students transfer to us and they have one, one course that they've completed. Amazing. They got into UBC engineering, they take our first year courses that are remaining, and they complete their degree. Some transfer students come in with five or six first year courses or seven, eight first year courses, and they don't get the full 12 courses that are engineering transfer program transfer students like Hamza provides. That's okay. You still get some credit, courses you've done in the past, and you're ultimately in UBC Engineering with a shot to finish our degree. Good question from Lai here. For colleges and universities offering the common first year engineering curriculum on our website, the requirements the same for the transfer. So most of our partners listed on the website offer the common first year engineering certificate, and they offer all of those courses within the September to April time frame and therefore earn the minimum GPA, complete all of those courses, typically 12, uh, within the September to April time frame, and you're, you're guaranteed admission into engineering on that campus. Some of our partner institutions spread those courses out over three semesters. They take summer, the summer semesters, or some of our partner institutions spread it out over two years. And so sometimes there's a different agreement in place there, but for the most part, that, um, that guaranteed GPA and requirement is at what on the website and for, for that partner. Okay, really good question. So most applicants to UBC, if you're applying direct from high school, you have a personal profile that you, that you fill out, a set of short answer questions. Uh, most of the time for transfer student applicants, you don't have to complete a personal profile. If you are an applicant who doesn't have enough post-secondary credits to completed to be evaluated on a combination of both your post-secondary and high school, maybe you might be asked to be submitting a, a personal profile, but for the most part, transfer students do not pop it in there. 
I'll also jump in. I got a similar question earlier from a, from another guest here. Uh, is So I mentioned that there is a personal statement you need to fill up for the second year placement process. Is that the same as the personal profile that might be required for high school applicants? It is a different, it's a completely different thing. Um, so as Kyle mentioned earlier, as a transfer applicant, um, you don't need to fill up this personal profile, uh, but this personal statement is specific to the uh, to the engineering program placement process. So it is two different things. Thank you, Franco. Okay, nice question here about transferring from general science. So most of our first year engineering courses are first year university mathematics, chemistry, physics, got some English in there too. Um, then we also have some engineering design courses in, in first year. So if you're taking first year university level science courses, you have a good shot at maybe six to 10 of those courses transferring in. Unlikely you're gonna also be doing first year engineering design courses in science, unless maybe you're already at UBC and, and in our science program and you work something out to take one of those first year courses. But um, yeah, you've got a good shot at getting a, a fair amount of transfer credits coming in. Transfer credits will be assessed after you're admitted to UBC. So you'd, you'd hear back from your offer. Maybe you hear early May that you got in. Then you get a transfer credit assessment saying you've been given transfer credit for the following courses. And they will count to this set of courses in first year engineering. So you'd have that information at hand um, in the spring, not too long after you uh, receive and accept your offer to UBC. But coming through through science is a very common pathway as well. Okay, Hamza, so when you transferred to UBC, we've got a question here that talks about uh, if you get accepted into the engineering program, when are you able to apply for co-op? When did you apply for co-op when you arrived at UBC? Uh, I was able to uh, apply for co-op the year I got admission into UBC. So as a second year student, um and it was a pretty simple process uh uh i think i applied first semester and uh, unfortunately i didn't get into co-op second year so i had to reapply the following year that's great hamza so hamza did our engineering transfer program where he did all of our first year courses and then when he was admitted to engineering he had that year two standing so if you are a transfer student and you're admitted into engineering with year two standing, you can apply for co-op. When Hamza was first applying for co-op, it was competitive. We had limited seats available. Now new, as Franco mentioned, starting this September, there's no cap. You do have to meet the minimum GPA requirement, which is most likely gonna be around 60, 65%. So if you're taking courses right now, post-secondary institution, aim to get that 65%. Those, those GPAs that were listed um, on the screen earlier for our, for our guaranteed admission pathway, that's in the 70 to 76 range. So you, you'd want to shoot for, for some strong grades to get in, but odds are if you get in to UBC Engineering as a transfer student, probably also eligible to go for co-op. Students can wait though and apply prior to their third year if they're, they're stretching their, their degree out. So there's, there's lots of options for, for that, but something you could be getting on the ball right away. So you apply to Vancouver, um, so you could be filling out that program placement form right away in the spring. You could be applying for co-op later that summer. The application usually opens August 15th. You could be joining your club right away in September. Don't overload by adding too much too fast, though. It can be a lot jumping into the into the mix. But um, yeah, definitely ways to, to get involved. If you were admitted to engineering and you have year one standing and you're still finishing up some first year courses, amazing. Finish up those first year courses continue to boost your GPA, you can apply to co-op the following year. Okay, Katie's asked, I took three courses this semester. If I took 27 transferable credits by the end of the spring semester, I'd be eligible for starting second year at UBC next year. So I'm gonna assume you haven't taken any post-secondary courses prior to this semester. And if those three courses you're doing right now are equivalent to nine credits, that would be a very busy semester next semester to get yourself up to 27 transferable credits. But yes, if you're admitted with 27 transferable credits, you can have year two standing. A lot of times students get a little bit put off by the year one versus year two. If I'm admitted to year one, 
Does that mean I can only take year one courses? In most cases, it's not true. You will take the remaining first year courses you have, but you're possibly able to take some second year courses if you meet the prerequisite requirement, if you're eligible for the course. Say you got transfer credit for Calculus 2 and you're wanting to take Calculus 3, and the only way to get into Calculus 3 is by passing Calculus 2 first. Well, you've passed that course with your transfer credit, so you could take Calculus 3. You could take a second year course, even though it's your first year at UBC still in your year one standing. So it, it more so might come down to the specific course registration requirements. Some courses require a year standing. Most of them require specific course prerequisites. Okay, Derek, is there something I can view specific courses for my desired field of engineering? And as a summary, you can view concentrations. Great, so on this sc screen that we're still sharing here, engineering.ok.ubc.ca and engineering.ubc.ca, those will take you to the Okanagan and Vancouver engineering pages and you can look at specific courses that you take let's say in Humza's computer engineering what are the courses you take in second year third year and fourth year and compare them to maybe the engineering courses that computer engineering students on the Okanagan campus take in second third and fourth year our first year courses are equivalent on both campuses but the second third and fourth year courses are unique to the campus even if it's the same program you can actually go to the you.ubc.ca site too and click that programs tab and take a closer look at courses that are taken in each year and take a closer look at careers that open up with specific degrees and programs and some really nice stuff to check out. Yes, and Chloe included that in the chat as well. That um, links are super helpful. Okay, Franco, if you are coming yes. in as a second year student, would you automatically start with your specialization or program? Yeah, if you if you get second year eligibility, uh, you will be prompted by our admissions team to start the second year placement process as well. Uh, and then you get placed in your program and then you go into second year course registration and you go right into your specialization in second year. Yes, for sure. Awesome, thanks Franco. No worries. And I've got another one for you. Okay, so if I'm looking to take a transfer program, do I apply to the transfer program after high school or do, through UBC, or do you apply to that transfer program through the school that's hosting that transfer program? Right. So it sounds like this student um, could be in high school right now. Um, so of course you're 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 welcome to apply to, to us directly from high school. That is how most students get into the program through the direct entry option. Um, but if you are considering a UPC transfer program for various reasons, uh, you will apply directly to that uh, that post-secondary institution that is hosting that program. Um, so I know Chloe had mentioned a couple of the uh, local area options in, in Vancouver, for example, Langara College is one, uh, with Kabbalana University. Um, those are some of the ex examples of uh, some of the schools that host uh, one of those engineering transfer programs where students can come over after completing those. Thank you, Franco. All right. There's Lots a question of about, questions. Go ahead, Franco. Minimum, yeah, I'm just looking at the next one. Is, it says, if I meet the minimum requirements, does that mean I would likely be accepted or do I need to be a lot more competitive than the minimum requirements? I think it really just depends on which transfer pathway you're coming through. Um, Kyle had mentioned the two different pathways earlier. If you're coming through the engineering uh, transfer program pathway, if you get those, if you get those guaranteed, um, if you, achieve those guaranteed GPAs. Again, for Vancouver campus is 3.1. Uh, for Okanagan campus is 2.8. You are guaranteed admission uh, into the program. Um, so then that would be that would be the requirement there. If you're coming in as a post-secondary transfer uh, to the post-secondary transfer pathway, um, then it would depend uh, based on the competition, based on the uh, grades that uh, our applicants are applying with, based on how many seats are available, and then based uh, on how many students apply as well. So that will be based on competition. Um, I always tell students, um, continue working hard, do as best as you can, get the highest grades that you can. Um, and then that, of course, will strengthen your application when it comes to applying. Okay, we are getting flooded with questions here. This is amazing. <laughs> Lots of questions about admissions. Um, I yes. think we've covered in general most of the the responses there. But if there's something specific that we we haven't, please feel free 
to be reaching out to us. Let's shift it over a little bit to student focus. Um, but we've got Hamza here who's taken time out of his, his busy schedule. So for students that are, are currently in post-secondary and considering applying to transfer to UBC, if you put yourself back into your shoes at that time in our transfer program, what were some of the things that were most important to you when considering where to study next? So uh, I had, uh, I guess, um, some priorities about where I wanted to study. Um, uh, I wanted to study at an institution that had a, a strong international reputation. So in case I wanted to work outside of Canada, I could work outside of Canada. And UBC is really well known outside of Canada. Um, there's plenty of uh, UBC graduates that go down south and work in the United States, uh, especially in tech roles. Uh, uh, and then uh, some other priorities I had uh, when choosing UBC included uh, whether or not the UBC had a strong campus community. And uh, and the, the third um, uh, most important thing was location. So uh, UBC being located in Vancouver, I have access to a lot of the amenities and uh, activities that uh, Vancouver provides as, as one, of the, one of the best places to live in the world. Um, uh, you have all the nature and you have all of the, 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 um, I, I'm going to go back and double down on that nature thing. I just said, you have the mountains, you have the, the forests, you can go hiking. And so like Vancouver being so close to, to some of the, those things I like to do, that was definitely another reason, uh, why I chose, uh, UBC. Uh, and I guess I also, uh, chose UBC because, uh, uh, I grew up in this area, so uh, UBC was always one of my dream universities to attend. Uh, we, uh, as high school students in the Metro Vancouver area, always thought of UBC as a great school to go to. That's great, thank you, Hamza. And and looking back at those courses you you completed prior to arriving at UBC, what are some tips that you can give to students that are currently in post secondary courses that to help prepare them for the rigor? of UBC engineering courses? Oh, some some tips uh, for students undergoing uh, either the post-secondary pathway or like a engineering transfer uh, program? Uh, like, is that what you're asking, Kyle? Yeah, like how can you prepare yourself for success in your academics at UBC for students right yeah. now who are taking post-secondary so courses? Yeah, academic stress is uh, something I'm currently also dealing with. So this is advice I need to give myself now and then, now and again. So um, uh, make sure that you uh, uh, have a, a schedule uh, and take care of the important things like mental health and your physical health. Uh, treat those as priorities because uh, if you undermine those, you will be also undermining your academic performance. Uh, make sure you get your eight hours of sleep and make sure you're having all your three meals a day, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Don't be skipping meals uh, and uh, get some exercise uh, because that's very important. Uh, uh, and then I think uh, regarding mental health, I, I would emphasize not being too worried about, uh, I know as transfer students, we think that we're sort of delayed or we're late and we're, we don't have, we're not as competitive as the students who got into university right after high school. Um, but that's absolutely not true. If you think about your career, that's another another 45 years ahead of you. Uh, uh, being a year late or a couple years late is no issue at all. So just take a deep breath in, breathe out and relax. Like you'll be okay. As long as you want to get into engineering and you've made that goal, uh, you'll get into engineering. So just keep trying. That's such great advice, Hamza. As an as a academic advisor, I assist current students like Kamza with their, their course planning and preparation. I also assist transfer students with the transition into, into UBC. And in most cases, if I had to generalize, a, a transfer student has typically taken that pathway because they wanted to stay closer to home for a little bit extra time to um, support family or, or take some courses, save some money, whatever the case may be, they've taken a conscious effort for that pathway. And by the time they arrive, at UBC, they know exactly what they want. They know how to accomplish it. They're much more mature, much more driven. 
we often see success from our transfer students because of that maturity as they're coming in. I actually think it's a positive more so than maybe some other um, folks from the outside looking in just assume, oh, it's a negative, you're starting late. But that's definitely not the case, especially if you're doing one of our transfer pathways, you're actually on, on that same timeline. So if you right now are in high school and you're considering maybe going the transfer pathway, Amazing. I would encourage you to continue to focus on your current courses in high school, focus on your health and wellness, and building that toolkit of balancing your success in academics, success in life, and success uh, with maintaining your health. Then start to educate yourself on the possible pathways of transfer for, for future and look at those schools and their application requirements and registration requirements. If you're currently taking college or university courses right now and planning to apply, very similar. Your main priorities, focus on your current courses now. Do the best you can in your current courses to meet those GPA requirements or to be competitive in that application. Stay on top of your health and your wellness. Eat your meals. Eat healthy meals. Get your sleep. Get some rest. Don't procrastinate on your assignments. Start building those strong habits so that if you do get into UBC Engineering, you're going to be successful once you arrive. There's lots of questions in the chat here. Um, we tried to get to as many as we could. Lots of them we didn't, but a lot of them are very granular. What if I don't get this and then that? It, we could simplify a lot of these questions with continue to work hard in the courses that you're in. If you're interested in UBC Engineering and you're planning to start by September 2025, submit the application by the deadline, and then keep working hard in the courses that you have remaining or that you're still finishing up. Monitor that email to keep up to date on any tasks that you're supposed to do. But for the most part, work hard in your courses, get the application in, and let UBC admissions worry about how they're going to break down that application. And if you get in, amazing. We'll be so excited to have you. And if you don't, that's okay too. You can still connect with us because we may have some backup options to, to take another crack at, at coming in to UBC Engineering in the future. Franco, do you have any advice for our guests that are with us here today? I don't think there's anything else I can add to it. Um, the only th I, I did see a couple of questions about housing. Um, so I just want to quickly address that. Uh, we'll take a few more minutes before we wrap up. Um, there were a couple of questions for about um, can you apply to housing as a transfer student um, at the Vancouver campus? The short answer is yes. Um, there are a limited number of spaces are set aside each year for newly admitted transfer students. Um, there are a few things you just need to meet. You need to apply by a certain deadline, um, and and we'll let you know. Um, so I we can send you the housing website um, so you can learn more about what the process looks like. But in short, there is available. Uh, spaces for transfer students. Uh, anything on the Okanagan campus side for, for housing is very, fairly similar? Yeah, very similar, but there's an extra step that students have to do if you're interested in housing. No matter which campus you're looking for, there's an application and there's a deadline yes. you have to get it in by. So check that out. Do your research, go to the housing website, um, and uh, you can submit that. If you're on any of these UBC pages that are appearing on the on the left, you can hit um, submit and actually we said we were going to paste some some links into the chat I'll do that now from that that popular slide okay Hamza we're going to allow you to have final words to the group thank you so much everyone for sticking around a few few minutes after so I'm a current student right now I'm planning to apply to UBC in the future and I know I have to work hard but I'm stressing out about it a little bit what is your advice for me at this time. What I said earlier, uh, focus on your uh, mental health, uh, your uh, and your well-being, as well as find a community of support. I think I missed on that. Uh, find people who are going through the same thing as you. Don't isolate yourself and think you're alone in this. There's other transfer students out there. There's other students out there that are going through the same thing. Find friends, find community. Talk to people, talk to people at advising at the institution you're transferring from, talk to people in advising at the university you're transferring to. These people are also humans and you can make friends with them as well and you can get information that you need to help you feel confident about your journey to, through academia. 
So that's the last thing I'll say today. Thanks, Hamza. Very, very insightful. Thank you, Hamza, for being here today. Thank you, Franco, for being here today, and Chloe, and thank you to all of our guests. We really appreciate you sticking around a few minutes after to be here with us. We're going to put uh, one final thing in the chat, uh, our emails. If you want to reach out and you have more questions after this, please feel free to do so. We've shared a lot of information with you, a lot of links here with you. I encourage you to continue your exploration and give us a shout if you have any more questions. Thanks so much for joining us.